Welcome to Programming Problems, Episode 1. Let's have a look today at a problem from Caddis called The Plank. We'll begin with the problem description. Suppose that we want to construct a long plank using smaller wooden pieces. These pieces have lengths of 1, 2, and 3 meters respectively. And we have an unlimited number of each. We can glue together several of the smaller pieces to create a longer plank. Now, for the challenge. If the plank should have a length of n meters, in how many uniquely different ways can we glue pieces together to get a plank of the right length? To solve this, we also need to consider the constraints. For this problem, it is simply that we can only be requested to construct planks of at least 1 meter and at most 24 meters. Before we move towards solving the problem, let's have a look at the example. Here, we are requested to construct a plank of 4 meters long. And there are seven unique ways to do so. For example, on the top left, we see the plank built up from four pieces of one meter. Just below that, we see a combination of two meters and two times one meter. When the requested length is so small, we could even do this exercise by hand and find that indeed there are only seven ways to make the plank. However, N can be as large as 24, which makes it impossible to figure out by pen and paper. So, what would be the best way to automate this? Let's start with a brute force algorithm. A brute force algorithm simply checks all possible combinations. For example, we can do a depth-first search where every node represents the length of the plank currently constructed. Let's call this length k. Then for every node of which the length is still smaller than n, we can add children with lengths k plus 1, k plus 2, and k plus 3. The values which we add, of course, represent adding a new piece of that specific length. Because we always add non-zero values and we do not recurse further, if the current value of a node is greater or equal to n, we guarantee that our search comes to end. At that point, we simply have to count all the nodes which have a value equal to n, giving our solution. Unfortunately for us, this solution is on the order of b to the power of d, where b is our branching factor of 3 and d is our maximum depth of 24. Our computers these days are fast, but in competitive programming, we simply cannot check all these 282 billion nodes fast enough. Of course, we can do better. Let's have a look at an insight which might already help you solve this problem on your own. The problem is recursive, and many nodes, which are essentially subproblems, show up multiple times in the tree. In the example, where n is 4, there are seven ways to make the plank. If we apply the algorithm, then we shall find many nodes in the tree where the length is, for instance, 2. Then by the nature of the problem, we shall find that all the subtrees rooted at these nodes look the same. So why would we have to recompute the solution for every subtree each time that we encounter it? If at this point you are inspired to write your own solution, now is a good time to pause the video and give it a shot. Let's take a look at the solution. Given what we learned thus far, we can find the recursive formula and do dynamic programming. We start with the assumption that we know the total number of ways to create a plank of length up to k. Then there are the following ways to make a plank of length k plus 1. Here we need to consider three cases. One case for every length that we can pick as the last piece to finish our plank of length k plus 1. If the last piece is of length 1, then we have k plus 1 minus 1 unique combinations, which all bring us to the desired length. Note that the k plus 1 minus 1 simply resolves to k. Thus, what I mean here is that to make a plank of length k plus 1 when picking a piece of length 1 at the end is simply the total number of ways that we can make a plank of length k. Similarly, if the last piece is of length 2, then we have to look at the number of ways which we can create planks of length k plus 1 minus 2. This, of course, resolves to k minus 1. Last but not least, we could also pick a segment of length 3 at the end. Thus, we need to consider the number of ways that we can construct a plank of length k plus 1 minus 3 or k minus 2. Because each of the cases is just as valid as the other, summing up the outcomes of the three cases gives us the answer for the total number of ways in which we can construct that plank of length k plus 1. 
So let's do this for the example where n is equal to 4. We start by constructing a table where the first row is our k, or n, if you will. In the bottom row, we will keep track of the number of ways in which we can construct a plank for that particular n. We start with n equals 0. This is a trivial case where we don't pick any pieces at all, and thus there is one way to construct such a plank. Note that you could also start the table at n equals 1, but let's stick with this example for now. Now that we're done with the trivial case of n equals 0, let's look at the next step where n equals 1. To find the answer, we go through the three cases, and only one case applies here, because picking length 2 or 3 here would mean that we have a plank of negative length. So we simply look at the previous step in our table and put that as our solution for n equals 1. Looking at n equals 2, we can find that now two cases apply. Either we pick a plank of length 1, or we pick a plank of length 2 as our last piece. Summing these together gives us the answer of 2. Next up, n equals 3. From this point onward, all three cases apply. Because picking 3 as the last plank means we have to look at n equals 0, which is in our table. In our final step, we look at the target value of the example where n equals 4. Here, we just look at all three cases again, and we sum the values that we find in our table. And would you look at that? We get the correct result of 7. Even better, unlike our previous solution, this solution only requires us to look at a fixed number of cells in our table for each length up to and including n. This makes the solution linear, and thereby more than fast enough. And that was it. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something today. If you want to learn more, then please consider leaving a like or subscribe. If you have any suggestions for a future episode, or you know an even better way to solve this problem, please comment below.